So pleased to welcome the head of school from the Woodward School for Girls here in Quincy, Renee Duchesne Farkas, is joining us via video conference, as is the necessary mode of communication right now to chat about how Woodward has really kind of seamlessly uh, transformed from uh, in classroom learning to online learning. So, Renee, great to uh, virtually see you again. And, yes, uh, thanks exactly. for spending some time. Yeah, thank you. It really has a success story that you're telling. And of course, um, one of the major disruptions from this pandemic has been education, both private um, and public. Right. So uh, thank you for being able to share your story at Woodward as to how you're adjusting uh, to that and how it might be able to uh, help others in the education field and parents at home too. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to me that the, really the basis for what you're doing has been a plan, an early plan uh, that you put in place uh, for something like this, probably not anticipating that it would be used in this current situation. Absolutely. You know, I look back and say six weeks ago, we created a team called the What If Team. What if we have to close the school? And I will honestly tell you, I had no idea that I would really close the school, but I thought as a leader, let's get a few of these conversations happening so we're prepared. And I look back and say, you know, that was one of the smartest things to have done to, to get ready for something because I always live by, I would rather do more than I needed to do than find out later that I should have done more. Um, and so that was a, a, a winning thing. And, and one of the things, Joe, I, I really want to come across in the interview is that, you know, Woodward is completing their fourth week. And so we're really out in front and ahead. And we really want to take that opportunity to share it out to teachers, administrators, and parents because everybody's in new territory and while I won't claim to know it all I've been doing it for four straight weeks and so and actually six if you include the planning and I think you know we have a lot to share and that's what we want to do problem solve help out my teachers are very willing to jump on a zoom meeting because it's an easy thing now six weeks ago it was kind of like how do I do this and now we do it like it's making our breakfast you know so thank you for the opportunity. Sure. No, absolutely. Our pleasure. Hopefully it does get the, the word out too. So how does it actually work at Woodward, Renee? What are you actually doing? Uh, say, you know, it, uh, here we are a little after 10 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. School is in session, right? Right. Absolutely. So a couple of things that we really paid close attention to. One is that the relationship of parents has always been important to us at the school. Um, parents as partners, we call it. And so you know, while there's a lot of technical answers I could give you, I, I think anyone listening, I would want to say, really think about what the impact has been on parents, because this is huge on them. And while we immediately think about the students and the faculty, I also recognize that, you know, parents need to now be experiencing homeschooling. For those parents, you know, who are having children at home, it's three meals a day. The dishwasher's running all the time now because we're not used to doing that. And these are the practical things that impact the whole thing, right? And that how do I teach my child? And if I'm a working parent, other than a parent who's already working, taking care of a family, if I also have an outside job that I want to keep, how do I do this with the kids in the house and, and all of that? So we've paid very close attention to that uh, with the parents and have set up um, parent virtual teas. I have three a week to certain uh, grade level parents and we are able to talk and deal with their emotions and give them the strength they need to lead their families. So I think that's really important. I think secondly is the student is that, you know, our children, no matter what age, they go to school for learning, but they also go to school because that's where their friends are and they want to see their friends. And, you know, there's lots of worries about isolation of kids and, and kids who might be in homes where their parents can't give them a lot of attention. What are they doing? Because their, their relationship with their teachers was so important every day to see them. And I read an article in the Globe earlier in the week and about an 11-year-old little boy who said, I wish I had all my teachers' cell phones so I could call them up mm -hmm. because that's what they need. And we forget that whole word of connections is so important, so important. And then thirdly is really the teachers, that we've really put a lot on the teachers' plates. And I'm, I'm really sensitive to that, that you know, they have been masterful in what they do. And now we've asked them to do that same thing, at least as good or better online overnight, right? right. So, um, so I really want to um, emphasize the importance of looking at our constituencies, our parents, our faculty, and our students. Um, and technically, 
it, that seems like the small piece, even though it was the big piece in the beginning. Right. And that we basically had a team of teachers who came together and I said, we need a schedule. And I thought, this is something I can't do. You know this, you're the teacher. They immediately assembled, created a schedule. They met the next day, they tweaked it. And we started out with a little less than more because we were worried about how long students are on online what their attention span could be. And, and of course, at Woodward, we're dealing with the older girls, grade six to 12, which I, I must say has to be a lot easier than dealing with the first grade to sixth grade students. Right. right. Yeah. And so the teachers really came together. And I see this forming of teamwork was just remarkable. Um, I, I just constantly am praising them because what the parents tell me in the first tea that I had is that they woke up that first morning saying, what do I do? Mm. And immediately my daughter said, mom, I have to go to my room. I have a schedule. I have to create my workspace now. Please don't interrupt. I have to be on class. Okay. And they're zooming in. And yep. uh, so it's actually turning out to be a wonderful experience. Okay. So uh, the girls are actually kind of teaching their parents and a little bit and guiding them along the way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I can see now when, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I could see now in the four weeks that I'm being invited into some of the classrooms. Yes. So last week I sat in on several and um, it's an amazing experience. You know, we know what the Zoom meeting is, but this, the classroom experience is much more than this yeah. because around the, the edges of the screen, they see all their classmates. Mm -hmm. So that's good. Mm -hmm. We did give them a list of expectations, which I'd love to share out yep. um, because people are giving me feedback that that was excellent because the girls, we were told before they left the school on our last meeting, you get up every morning, you make your bed, you change your clothes into your school clothes. This isn't pajama day, right? right? Right, right. And those were really important things that the parents are giving me feedback that it's like, it's serious work. Mm -hmm. And we, we said we weren't closing the school, that we were shifting our learning from the classroom to the home. Okay. So learning from home is our motto because I didn't want them to get into the mindset of this is vacation or a snow day and right. I don't really have to do anything, right? So that was really helpful, I think. Yeah, so the, you know, the message is that the building itself is not the school. The school is the teachers, the students, the staff. I mean, that's Absolutely. the school, yeah. 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 And there again is the connections, you know, that they see each other right. and they have a sense of purpose. Yeah. So the, the, the aspects of sticking to a routine and having structure and having accountability, that sounds like it's absolutely a key to the success of this, this online curriculum. Yes. I think all of these things that we've been talking about, you know, six weeks ago, I would have said it's all about the Zoom or Google Classroom, nothing else. We just have to learn that. And now I'm like, that was the smallest piece of all of this even though that is a big piece. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, well, I mean, who's more technically savvy than uh, the kids of today? They, they were born into it, you know, whereas the folks yeah. in our generation, it's a, it's a, it's a learning curve uh, just to adjust to that, that yeah. way of communicating. Yeah. 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 yeah, I have some of my students, because last week we said that we can start bringing the clubs back in now because we wanted to get the academic learning down and make sure that the amount we were giving the girls was enough. And I'm now having uh, virtual teas with each grade level as well and getting feedback from them. And they're showing me their workstation at home and okay. how they've reorganized a corner of their bedroom and created a bookshelf that keeps their textbooks on it. So they've really, there's some great learning happening here. Mm. Things that, you know, time management and organization that we, we teach at school mm -hmm. is just happening, you know, way more than we could have done in, in class because mm. we've been kind of thrust into this uh, situation. So the feedback from the girls has been great. Uh, as well. And then we just brought in the clubs. And as head of school now, I'm having girls invite me in to some of their clubs, which I normally wouldn't be doing. Okay. So yeah. I'm added extension of learning here, both with the parents and the students. And the students are using their voice more because they're inviting us in. So it's quite nice. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. There's some silver linings to this. Yes. Do you think uh, uh, this may develop into some kind of a new curriculum in the future, Renee? You know, where maybe well, it will have. Yes, I think I think it will because um, Woodward has implemented Wednesdays at Woodward, and that was a time that we wanted to provide information sessions to the community to come in, and from eight thirty to ten, we would be available to show them around and, and talk about the school. So we kept those going virtually. 
And so some of our new parents are um, zooming in. That's one mm -hmm. of my new words now, zooming in. <laughs> and we just had one this morning and we talked about our college counseling program. And then um, I have a meeting on Friday with my administrative team. And the topic is, what are we learning that we can car carry forward? And one of them is, how do you orient new families to the school? Mm -hmm. So these families that will be joining the school in September have been on Zoom with us Wednesday mornings for six weeks now, learning about different parts of the program. Okay. And they wouldn't have got this till the end of the year once and then a mailing in the summer. Right. So there's things, there's, you know, I guess they say opportunity out of crisis. I don't right. yeah. like that term, but I know it's true. And we have to look that way and look for the silver bullet and, 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 continue to give ourselves the hope that we need to get yeah. through this. Now, has, uh, has actual, you know, grading uh, changed at all? I mean, are, are students still being graded on their curriculum and, and being held accountable in that way? Yeah, that's a great question because at first the schools were talking about pass-fail. Yeah. And all of a sudden my, the teachers at Woodward and eventually more teachers said, no, 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 we don't pass-fail. That makes the online learning look less than what our classroom learning is. Okay. And as one teacher said, um, to me, our classroom learning, um, time in the classroom does not impact the amount of learning and that the virtual classroom is shorter, but students have more follow-up work. And um, our teachers, and I think most of the teachers in the country are not uh, going to pass fail and that they're implementing this, their own way of continuing the grading. If anything, we need to uh, instruct the girls or the students about the honor system mm. and that, you know, you need to do your best. And, mm. uh, you know, I don't think there's a lot wrong with open book tests anyway, because this is about learning. And so we're doing a combination of both right now. Okay. Um, I think where the students might be having more challenges and teachers are the, those in the AP classes. Yes. Um, and that AP is adjusting and we've stayed in communication with them and they will be doing those AP exams online. Okay. So there'll be a lot of security check um, and things to come, which uh, AP has been communicating with us quite well. Okay. Yeah. For folks who don't know, uh, advanced placement, right? Is what the AP. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And, and it's very much on the minds of the juniors right now because they know when they come back in September, that's a critical year for college, right? right. And they don't want to fall behind. So they're yeah. worrying. So we're keeping them in touch with that. Sure. Um, you know, are you starting to plan uh, for the event that uh, the kids might not be able to come back to school this year? Oh, that's the, that's the question of the day. So yeah. right now I'm holding on to May 4th. Okay. And I'm working with the students about May 4th because I want them to know that we're all in this together and there's an end to this. Um, I have, am now working with my staff that the end is really that we're going to get back sometime in June. So we've moved all of the May events into June because we all have to see the calendar. We also have created one that most of these might happen in August. Okay. And then we're now talking about the spring and the fall being all put into one. Okay. One, one of the things that the students are sharing with me and particularly the seniors is that they don't want these traditions to become virtual. They They'd say, rather wait, right? Oh, we'll wait, we'll wait. And, a great comment to share with you about the seniors here at the Woodward School, which is in Quincy. They have, every week I speak with them and they say, Miss Renee, you didn't change your mind. We're still going to graduate in the Church of the Presidents. Wow. This is so clear on their minds that I have to make it happen. Okay. Isn't and that interesting? Whenever it is. Yeah. I mean, as, as part of the national group of heads and principals talking, um, we're even making plans out to Thanksgiving being the time that we bring the communities back because we don't know yet. Do right. We? Yeah. No, we, we don't. don't. Know. We, right. Yeah. We hear about second waves and we have to, you know, we have to lead with safety first. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, a lot. yeah. What do you think, um, you know, public educators, um, Renee can learn from what, what Woodward is doing in terms of online uh, schooling right now? Well, first they can call us and we'll go, we'll do a zoom for them. Um, and that I think what the most important thing was, that we as administrators have to ask the teachers, what do you need? And the technology people in the school, person or people in the schools is critical. Um, to be able to set up, you know, regular meeting ID numbers so we're not all running around saying, what ID is this one? Who do I call? What's the password? Securing all that, creating a document so you have it in front of you because as teachers, 
you also want to zoom into each other's classes so that you can see how we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think teachers working together in the small groups, what are you doing? How do you do this? Help each other. I mean, many of my teachers are working in the breakout sessions now because one teacher showed them how to do it. And it was really simple, mm -hmm. but without someone showing you, it's not simple, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can pull up a document now, a presentation document, and I know how to use the whiteboard. And it was because a teacher showed me and I asked, I asked for help. Okay. He did it and it was 20 minutes and I, I'm up and running, right? So remembering that and, um, and I think also not too much at, at the beginning. We don't have to teach all the courses every single day. Okay. Make a mini, make a mini schedule because this is all new. And we, we instituted, we're all in this together. And it, the first week, a couple of our, I was either students or teachers couldn't fully get online. And we carried on and said, that's okay. We'll help Abigail. We'll call her afterwards. We'll get the tech guy to call Abigail's mom, figure out what happened. And um, of course it's much bigger for the public schools. Right. right? Yeah. really empathize with them. Um, I did send this article both to the mayor and to the superintendent to reach out and say, I'm here. Yeah. I've got some information here. Let me help because yeah, I really want to. Have they, have they responded yet? Well, they just got it yesterday, so okay. not yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they just launched online, so I've got, I'm sure they've got their hands full. But They, they you know, did, yeah, just around, earlier this week, actually. Yeah, yeah. issues around connectivity mm -hmm. and devices are a big issue. It was big for me. I can't mm -hmm. imagine what they're dealing with um, in the public schools because they're just a bigger school. It's you know? almost 10,000 students in the Quincy public Absolutely. school. Absolutely. Yeah. How many Absolutely. in Woodward? We've got about a hundred. So yeah. that's a lot easier, right? Yeah. I mean, I have 13 to 15 students in a film in a, in a class. I don't have 20, 22 or whatever, but, yeah. uh, but I think the schedule is important. I think reaching out to the parents if they can, which uh, that's a big task to ask teachers to do. Maybe the administrators could be calling up and checking in because we don't know what every home is like and every mm -hmm. home is different. That's right. Yeah. And, um, their needs are different and the, the best we can meet and have the parents connect to each other and help each other out. This is all about connections and community now. Like yeah. it's never been, we've always used those words, but wow, do they, are they more meaningful now? Yeah, I was interested to learn um, through uh, some of the uh, descriptions that you gave me about your ability actually to uh, include programs that you might not normally in the classroom, like virtual tours of Italy and what's going on in Italy. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Oh. Okay, you want me to say a little bit about that? Please. Oh, great, great. So we have an Italian culture class, and you know what happens is we all know the term think out of the box, but when you're put in a crisis and if you're calm through it, you start to think about things that you didn't think about, right? So we, I went into an Italian culture class. I was invited by the, the teacher, which was wonderful. And she had brought in a teacher from Italy. Um, and she was right in our classroom, like you and I right now. Yeah. And first I'm like, you're really in Italy, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but then she was able to share with the girls. I mean, we, the teacher turned it into a, you know, you have to think about your skills and you have to adjust sometimes what's the skill of this class. And she made it into interview skills, how to learn to create questions, how to wait turns, who's going to ask what kind of questions, what do we really want to learn? And they went through all of that just beautifully. And, you know, we learned about what it's like in Italy. And my biggest experience for that, because the class ended in us regrouping and talking about empathy, because for me, I've been seeing some of these videos of, of people on the balconies of Italy singing right and it's been a beautiful view to me saying oh wow look how those the italians are coping with this mm -hmm. but then she gave us the other side because she shared with us she was in northern italy and can't get to her family um in southern italy and that she said the poverty is people the, there's not food on the shelves is and that right? mm -hmm. people have lost their jobs and they don't have money and they and their people are dying in their family yeah so it was two sides right of joy and sorrow and you know, I, when I was seeing those um, Italians on their balcony, I didn't see the side of sorrow. Mm -hmm. I knew things were bad, but I wasn't thinking that. Mm -hmm. So then we talked about empathy and two sides of every um, situation that we wouldn't have, that class wouldn't have taught that way that day. Yeah, you get so a much was, bigger uh, a picture of what's going on. We, we, in journalism, yeah. we, call it, we call it ground truth. So basically, yep. it, it's That's right. grounded, That's you know, right. what is actually yeah. happening, yeah. Yeah, and I just got, I'm just going to read something quickly. Um, I got a notice from my health teacher last night who said, 
you know, Renee, as a health teacher, I've never been more excited to teach during these online classes. They have enabled me the freedom to offer guest speakers that may not have had the availability to visit my classrooms during the hectic schedules of our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. The students have loved the topics and the variety is extremely engaged. I'm so happy that you keep telling us that there is opportunity out of crisis. This is a true example. And then she talks about bringing people in from the South Shore. She brought Meg Kennedy in, who's a school adjustment counselor who talked on stress and anxiety to the high school girls. She brought in Rian Barati, who's a certified health coach, who talked about movement and eating well and yoga and how you know all of us as adults and students have to take care of ourselves during this time. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sitting in a chair for four weeks now, much more than I used to sit, right? Sure. Yeah. And you've got to fit that walk outside into your schedule or it doesn't happen, right? And now we have to wear a mask and all of that. So talking about it and, you know, making us all be all in this together is, is the, the new motto. Yeah, it, is, it really is interesting to see um, and in many ways, so much, many things are much more accessible because we have to change our time commitments, you know, and our, and our daily Absolutely. routine and schedule to say, well, I have all this time now. What do I do with it? You know, I'm able to right, sit down right. and chat with Renee on exactly, a day right? I couldn't have before, yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought about you on the weekend. I'm like, oh, I haven't talked to him in a while. We, I should, because I was writing this article and said I would love to reach out and, and help, you know, anybody. You know, one teacher gets a little confidence. That's, that's, you know, joy in my day. So, you know, being able to do anything again, I just want to emphasize that we're, we're here to help. And um, we're also running um, open houses for students at 2 o'clock every Thursday. Oh. So we run the Wednesdays at Woodward in the morning for parents. And then Tuesdays. And what we're doing is our students are getting on and talking about different topics because you want to keep these students engaged. You know, we don't want them home and on the wrong screen time, right? I mean, the juxtaposition of this is now we're saying to them, get on FaceTime with your friends, do videos together, you know, call each other. And um, just because we want them to stay connected, because that's so important. And I, I, that's probably my biggest worry about students who might be at home and not feeling connected. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, that's not a good place to be hidden in their bedrooms, right? Yeah. So, right. you know, for a, a teacher, Renee, who may be watching our, our conversation or listening to our conversation right mm-hmm. now and is being challenged with trying to do an online classroom in, in this new atmosphere, that right. we, what's, what's your advice to them? What's, what's your sage? Uh, well, uh, first, we're all in this together and it's trial by error. And when something doesn't work, Please know that all of us have had that experience in the last four, four weeks. And when we come back in and say, oh, I'm so sorry, people say, don't worry about it. That's okay. Um, one of the biggest challenges, I think, from being in the classes is that first, the skill level. And if, if you can't do breakouts and all, don't worry about it. What's most important is connecting with the students, having a conversation about the learning, And my teachers are all spending the first two to three minutes. It's hard in the middle school to keep it to two to three minutes about, I hope you're doing well. Give them that sense of, I care about you because the teacher is so powerful to these students. The teacher is, you know, just their vehicle of connection and and so important. And that reach out to each other, even for a little bit at a time um, about, you know, other teachers, can you help me do this or, is this something else I can do or mm-hmm. reach out to the administrators? Tell us what you need. Okay. And I know that's not so easy to do, but this is the time to do it now because if you ask, we will do everything we can to get it and we might not be able to, but at least we know. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the other thing I would say is that this is a lot of work. We're putting a lot of work on you. Mm-hmm. And um, so just do what you can and take care of you and, you know, so much, don't worry about other stuff right now. It will come together okay. because I would say the week three and four, we feel pretty confident now. I'm like, wow, I'm knowing how to space my, my meetings a little bit to give me lunch time. I didn't have lunch the first two weeks. It was yep. just boom. <laughs> <Right? laughs> okay. And get a schedule in place, yeah. you know, and less is more, less is more. Sure. Right. So, you know, it sounds like personally and professionally, this is a whole new chapter um, in your, in your career. Absolutely. For all of us. Yes. You know, what, what's, what's the, um, the learning that's going to come out of this. And I think that, you know, I, I read the wall street journal is my favorite thing on Saturday mornings. And I always read Peggy Noonan and she said two things, which I've been repeating. One is this always good comes out of the bad, right? 
um, and that's the opportunity out of crisis. And second, she said, this isn't, um, this is a preparation for something bigger. And that was pretty scary. I had to read it a couple of times and say, what is she really saying? And she said, what's most important is, you know, we're a global community now and things bigger than this are going to happen. And this is preparing us. And I was really like, you know, I think she's right. And, and she said, what's most important is that leaders continue to talk about what they're learning. And so this Friday, I have a, my, what we call my crisis leadership team meeting. I think I'd like to change the name. I don't want crisis there anymore. Uh, maybe it's innovative leadership team meeting. Sure. And I want to start to document what we're learning because things are going to be bigger, as she says. And I would think that our teaching, we're just doing our program of studies and we're talking about, would we offer a couple of extra classes that would be online at different times in the school day? Right. I don't right. know. Right. I don't know. So, so you have to stay positive and you mm -hmm. have to keep learning. And yeah. um, it's really about the future right now. It, we're, we're in the day, but there's something out there that, that this is preparing us for, which sounds a little spiritual, but I think it is. Yeah. Have you had uh, the, the support of your board uh, behind you and, and all this? I'm, I'm sure they've had to meet virtually as well. Yeah, they've been absolutely terrific. And actually, I'm having a meeting with them at noon today, a Zoom meeting, because the big issue that's going on in the country, I can say now, because I'm on the National Coalition of Girls Schools, I, I video conference three times a week with them, and I'm with the National Association of Independent Schools, as well as the local New England one. Um, so that I can stay in touch with heads and know what we're doing because we're helping each other. Mm -hmm. And everybody's worried about the seniors because the seniors are starting to melt down this week. It's kind of like set in, this is real. Yeah. And I'm not going to get my graduation. I'm not going to get this. I'm not going to get that. This isn't fair. This is my the most important year. And they're having challenges revisiting colleges right now and trying to make decisions by May. Sure. So they feel like the world that they're Atlas Shrugged, you know, they just feel, woe is me. And so my meeting, um, which really came off of being on my virtual meeting yesterday, is that um, we're all talking about what can we do for the seniors. And mm -hmm. it could be something as simple as baking cookies and tying them up in a bag and my administrative team, each of us taking three houses and run out and drop them on their porch, mm -hmm. you know, do something um, – and so that's what my board is going to be. So imagine having a board meeting and it's all about what are we going to do for the seniors? Yeah. You know, we're thinking about new t-shirts, uh, sweatshirts that we'll do, but, but fun things, you know, um, to give them now, to give them hope so that they walk out in the porch and if they see a, a thing of ice cream, they'll say, oh my God, someone's thinking about me. Because yeah. right now they think nobody's thinking about them. Yeah, they think it's all, they're, and they, they're heartbroken. They're really heartbroken. And they keep saying, please don't do graduation virtually. I'm like, don't worry, it will be the Church of the Presidents. <laughs> I've only been in that church once for graduation last year, and I can't wait to be there again. Okay, very good. Yeah, Anything else you'd like to, uh, to share this morning? Uh, no, um, I don't know. I guess um, I'd like to, you know, if you had any ideas later on other groups I can reach out to, or, you know, if we could do a weekly session that parents could uh, Zoom in sometime. I don't know how you're you're operating, but... You know, I'm open, and I think what what I feel right now is it's not a lot of preparation. It's just sharing experience, and that you know we can all afford thirty to forty minutes a week to to help others. And um, I would really like to do that. And particularly um, interested in reaching out to parents who just want to have a voice, right? Talk to somebody about this. And I know my teachers are very willing to do something like you and I are doing right now um, for teachers. So we could do middle school, we could do upper school, we could do geography, we could do English, we could do advisory, whatever comes forward. Um, if you're in touch with the Quincy Public School, I really want to be a part of the community right now okay. and help in any way that we can. Okay, I think for our role here at QATV, the best we can do is to help you connect with the schools and with the community. So maybe if you could give out some, uh, some good contact information, Renee, where folks sure. can get hold of you. Right, okay, so... Um, my email is really big. Okay. <laughs> so how would I do that? <laughs> My name is rduchaneyfarkas at the woodwoodschool.org. But okay. what they could do is go in, go on our website and um, find me there or you'll see the open houses 
and register in and just tell us what you want to talk about and we'll be able to separate it um, out whether it's a parent or a teacher and be able to set something up. Okay. Please leave your email when you come in and, and tell us and maybe I can get something on the website for inquiries or just connections. I'd that would be great. Connections. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. So it's the okay, woodwardschool.org, right? Yep. The woodwardschool.org. Yep. Okay. That would be great. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. All right. Well, thanks so much, Joe. It's great to see you again. <laughs> Likewise. Uh, hopefully we can do it in person real soon. Right. 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 Okay. So we're here to help and, and appreciate and reach out anytime that you want. Okay. Will do. Thanks for your time. Okay. Great. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, Bye-bye.